Hi, I'm Rose and I'm in the business management degree program at Seneca College. Currently, it's summer break for me, so I don't have any classes this summer from May to August. I go back in September for semester two of the BBM program. Last semester, the semester that I just finished from January to April this year, I was living in the Seneca residence. So in this video, I wanted to go over everything that you should basically know about the Seneca residence, basically just information about the Seneca residence and everything about it in case you're wondering um, and in case you have like questions or anything or you're just like wondering about like some of the services and stuff and how the Seneca residence runs and yeah, so I will go through everything that you should basically know. I don't know everything, but I know most things. And I say most things because when I was staying there, some things were closed off due to COVID, but I think now like those places like are open now maybe, now that like the situation and like this pandemic is getting better and there's like more, like the restrictions are like less strict, I think but I'm not too sure. So that's a come I say that I will go over like most things, but like everything, like, like I don't know everything. So I will start the video now. So first things first is you must apply to live at the Seneca residence and then be confirmed by the Seneca residence that they will accept you because they don't accept everyone, they accept most people. But yeah, to apply to live at the Seneca residence, there's actually two residences. There's the Seneca King Campus residence and then there's also the Seneca Noonham residence. So there's only two residence buildings that you can apply to. And to apply, you have to go to www.SenecaResidence slash apply dash now. And on there, you can pick whichever residence that you either go to or are nearby that you would like to live by. And you just click on them. I'll probably make a video on how to apply using the website a little bit like more in detail, but like I'll just go over it very generally. You just click on the campus, you fill out the application and you basically just wait for them to get back with you through the messaging on that site. You don't actually get an email or you may get an email um, saying that they accepted you or not, but it's mostly done just through the messages on that Seneca residence website. Oh, slash apply I mean slash apply dash now on that website they have like a messaging system but you may also get an email it's kind of confusing um so yeah so you just have to apply through there you basically just fill out your information and then you fill out what kind of roommate you're looking for like a quiet one or if you're thinking about like going to parties more or just like basically your preference basically and then there's also the fee so you don't pay the you don't pay the fee right away you just fill out your information, what type of roommate you want, medical um, information, like who they can contact just in case of anything happens. So I think that's pretty much it. But yeah, I'll go through it like in another video, very detailed and like step by step. So yeah, so once they accept you, you do like they message you saying that you have to pay the Seneca residence fee to live there and so for like just one semester which is four months the cost is four thousand dollars so one thousand dollars a month um that's for the fall and winter semester in the summer it's actually a little bit cheaper it's like about three thousand six hundred or like three thousand five hundred it kind of like depends so it's about like five hundred less i think in the summertime so you actually have to pay online they don't do i don't think they do phone payments and i they don't do in-person payments it's just online and the way that i did it because there's like i think there's a couple different ways but i had to set up like a payee information and i don't know i can't i'll go through it like in detail in another like as i said in another video but I believe, I remember it took three days for my payment to go through 
and I had applied late so it kind of just like made made me like um not be able to live at residence as fast as I wanted to because I applied late so I like came the last week of January and then I had to wait like three days because like for the payment to go through and then like Saturday or like I think Thursday or Friday I got like oh I got to like confirm with like the Seneca residents that um I got to confirm with the Seneca residents that they had finally gotten my payment so then I just like moved in on Saturday so I kind of like blew off that like last week so then once your payment goes through you then get messaged or emailed that you got matched with a roommate and they provide the email of that roommate and it, I think the message it just said like oh like you can message you can email each other and like talk about common interests if you want I didn't do that my roommate didn't do that with me I just like met her at the dorm when I moved in so because of covid they didn't allow anybody to come into the seneca residence with you and help you move in so i don't know if that's changed now but when i was living there like nobody was allowed to come in with you so i just had to like move in by myself and make like multiple trips they also don't provide like a trolley like when you like to carry your stuff up but there are elevators there so that like you don't have to take the stairs and go all the way up to where your like where your room number is so yeah and then you have to check in with the front desk which is right at the main entrance and basically they like kind of tell you a couple of things they tell you where the mailboxes are they tell you like a little bit about the Seneca residence. I don't remember exactly what they said, but they give you your they give you a temporary card to your room. It's just like a white plastic like a rectangle card. It's magnetic. Um you just use your card to go like this in like the door to get in. You have a temporary card if you haven't like lived at the residence before because they like are getting your card ready to like getting it printed and everything like with your picture and then you just basically scan but yeah you get the temporary card for mm, i would say at least maybe two weeks or maybe a week i would say two weeks i can't i can't exactly remember but and then you get notified like you get an email saying that your permanent card is ready but like once you move in you just get a temporary card it's not a big deal it works the same and yeah so you, you check in you get your temporary card and you get a like it, kind of, it looks like a house key it's just for your mailbox to open and then you have to fill out like the covid screening like questionnaire you just fill it out and then yeah you're all checked in and then you basically just like in the Noonham residence, you just like walk past the front desk. There's the turntables or turnstiles where you have to use your temporary card or like your permanent card if you have one to enter. Like you just swipe it, you basically just swipe it down and like you get access to the elevator and like the elevators obviously lead to your room so and there's security watching 24 7 like right beside the turnstiles and the front desk and then because of covid they only had like the inside the elevator it's socially distanced so there's like only supposed to be two people but like more people like just go in the elevator so it's like whatever but that's typically like the code and then after the elevators you just like walk to wherever or like whatever floor your room number is and inside the room there's actually two rooms so every dorm has two roommates sometimes people are just alone like sometimes they don't actually get paired up with a roommate it just like depends on the number of residents in the Seneca residence so there's two rooms two bedrooms and then there's a restroom and there's the kitchen 
so the restroom and the kitchen are shared and then the bedrooms are separate there's no locks on the bedroom doors you just close the door you just close the door if you want privacy but there's there's no actual locks inside so in the shared kitchen there's a fridge there's a freezer attached to it there's the cabinets there's a sink there's cabinets below there's like little space beside the sink um i believe they do provide the blue recycling bags they have a like garbage bin for you two of them so there's one in the washroom and there's one in the shared kitchen and then there's also the table and then there's two chairs and then in the restroom there's just like the mirror sink like little space on top cabinet below the sink and then there is a shower it's kind of like in a triangle the shower like the shape of it so it's not too big and there's no bathtub there's also in the washroom there's no shower curtain so you would have to buy a shower curtain so that they're like when you take a shower the water doesn't go all over the floor and everything oh and then also in the kitchen there's the microwave when i was staying at the seneca residence they only allowed us to cook and make our food out of the microwave they closed down the common kitchen so i actually don't know about the common kitchen and i actually don't know where the common kitchen even is located in the seneca residence because i haven't been to it and i haven't seen what it looks like because i was only allowed to use the microwave so i learned how to cook in a microwave like that whole time that i stayed at residence which is pretty crazy i know that some people brought like the like little stove top that you could just plug in or they brought a kettle but I just like relied on the microwave. I was fine because you can actually cook and do everything in the microwave. You just have to like search online how to do it. And then like, yeah, cause I learned how to make pasta in the microwave. Like you just have to microwave it in like turns. Like you microwave it for like seven minutes and then you take it out, you add more water, you microwave it again for seven minutes. And then you just, until the pasta like has cooked. And then in the, bedroom it's just a double sized bed and there's the desk and there's a monitor on the desk there's a telephone and there's drawers three drawers and then you have like the windowsill space to put stuff there's also like beside the bed near the door there's like more i guess cab not cabinet space but like cubby space and there's like the two like little um, hanger spots where you can like hang up your clothes. You just need to have clothes hangers. If not, you can just use the cubby space. So that's pretty much a rundown of what the dorm entails and what it like looks like. And then I also wanted to say that the Seneca residence, there's 15 floors to the Seneca residence. So there's a lot of resident rooms available. <laughs> and on every even floor so floor 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 all even floors have laundry rooms which are located like on like you get out of the elevators you exit the like little elevator lobby you turn right it's right at the like middle of the hallway also the laundry rooms are open 24 7 so you can do your laundry whenever you want so every resident can access the laundry room there's no lock on the door you don't have to use your key or anything you only have to have a laundry card so you can use some machines the laundry card costs five dollars and to get a laundry card the laundry card machine is in the lobby it's by the soda machines and you can pay by debit or credit and do it yourself there so it costs five dollars and then each like the washer and the dryer machine it costs two dollars to use each so you just use your laundry card to pay there's a sink in the laundry room and then like every time you use the dryer you have to like take out the like fluffy thing or the fluff that comes out and you just throw it into the garbage and you went like once you're done using the machine you like leave the door like open so that it like airs out and there also isn't a place in the laundry room to well they have like a metal not like a table but it's like kind of like a shelf there's like one like one shelf here and then there's one like shelf below 
I don't know what they are for. It could be for ironing, like a place to iron your clothes, but there is no iron provided. So I'm not sure if that's what it is, but there is no place to iron your clothes. I think it might be that part that you can use. You just have to bring your own iron. There is also a cardio room located on the 15th floor of the Seneca residence. There's only, I actually like sneakily looked inside because like the door was left open and so I just like looked inside quickly. So there's like, I believe there's treadmills and ellipticals, but I didn't really like get a good look at it because it was closed during my stay there due to COVID. And then there also is common lounges where there's just like seating and tables. And then there's also the study lounges. They're located on certain floors. I don't have it memorized, but the study lounges just have a bunch of tables and chairs. So you can like go with like some friends or by yourself. If you want to change the scenery from your dorm room, or if you want to like study in a group, you can like go to the study rooms and study together. And then there are games lounges. So there's, <clears throat> There's a pool table, foosball table, table tennis, so like ping pong, there's a poker game, there's like, and like, it looks like the Pac-Man machine, but it's not the Pac-Man game, it's like a different game. So they have those games available at the games lounges. The only thing is, is that to like, if you want to use the table tennis or the foosball, um, or like the pool table, then you have to go to the main lobby and you have to ask the front desk for the equipment. Um, you just, I think you give your room number and your name and then like after you're done using the equipment, you just return it afterwards. I don't think there's like a time limit on it. And during my stay there, the, I think the common lounges and the games lounges, they only operated from, I believe it was it might have been 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. or it could have been 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and then the study lounges were open 24 7 so 24 hours you could just go to the study lounge if it's like 2 a.m. 3 a.m. you know whenever and then the Seneca residents they don't provide a garbage bin or some people just use like a plastic bag and they hang it on the little like cupboard below the sink that's what we did and but i was that's what my roommate did but i was like used to like having a mini garbage can so i brought my own and like used my own plastic bags so for the garbage like to dispose of your garbage when it's full you just have to there's a garbage disposal located at like each end of the hallway and then also in the middle hallway there's like a door at the garbage disposal rooms there's like a sign that says like it's garbage disposal or it's like the garbage chute so like you just you just open the door there's like a garbage chute, you just put it in and then you close it and then for recycling there is a recycling room it's located like if you go into the main lobby at the main entrance you actually have to go outside but it's on the right hand side there's like a room and it says the recycling room so there's like a big like garbage bin there's like the blue bins and there's signs and stuff located like saying where to put your where to like separate your recycling it's a little bit confusing but i believe the blue bins like they were just for paper it says paper only and then the like garbage like huge garbage bin is just for like cardboard and cans and then there's like these, I think they were black bins or I don't know, whatever bins were near the door. That's like where you put your plastic and I think glass too. There is no compost disposal, but I did some investigating. So at the Newnham campus, like if you just bring your compost to the Newnham campus, like when the campus is open, there's actually new compost like bins beside the garbage and the recycling bins like at the campus so if you just bring it over to the campus like you can put your you can dispose of your compost properly the Seneca residence doesn't have a compost disposal system and then at the Seneca residence there also is like fun activities and events during like the time that you stay there 
it's kind of like SSF like events and activities but it's run by the Seneca residents so if you just follow I think it's Seneca Newham residents their Instagram page like they have like their full like they have posts and like of when activities are and stuff like that I actually never participated in any because I found out like after the semester was done that they had that like so I missed out on that but I was like super busy during the semester so I don't know if I would have like attended like a lot of the events but still like if I decide to go back then like now I know and then they also like the I think it's a Seneca advisor they email you the monthly activities so I was actually wondering like how to participate in them but like I said like I like the end of the semester I figured out like if you just follow their Instagram page like they give you like the links to the zoom links of like events that they have but the Seneca advisor does like send every resident like an e email like a monthly email of like the calendar of like activities of like activities and stuff and then also when you stay at the Seneca residence they have like I think it's an advisor too that sends you an email to check in and you basically just like fill out a like questionnaire saying like how how you're sleeping how things are going at the Seneca residence if every if everything is okay so that's pretty nice and then every month in the morning they have a fire drill test so if you sleep like in like me then you get woken up by it every month and they just do a test and it like it's very loud but it's just like once every month and just so you know if the fire alarm does go on then the front desk does a message like over the PA system saying what has happened or if there's like a detection of smoke in a certain like area in the residence or if it's like you know if there's a huge fire or whatever so they do they specifically say where the fire alarm like went off and then they also say you either have the option of exiting your dorm and like leaving the building and like you know being outside and because the fire the fire station it's like the fire station the closest one is located literally like across the street from Seneca so they do come fast so you won't be outside like waiting for too long and or you have the option of staying in your dorm room so like if because the front desk they say where the fire alarm went off and normally it's just like like if someone burnt their food or whatever or someone like used a match then it like the fire alarm goes off so like i remember i stayed in my suite a couple times or maybe once and then i left the like the next time because i don't know i've just been taught that you have to leave that you like should leave the building either way just in case so that's kind of what i do but yeah so to leave the building you don't use the elevators of course there's stairs like in the middle of the hallway at the very ends um and then you just take the stairs out like the firefighters they will go on the pa system and they'll like tell everyone that like like everything is okay and you can get back to what you're doing there also is a lot of parking spots available like all around the Seneca resident so if you're driving or if you use a car then there like is a lot of parking like spots available there's also the like the new parking garage that you can use and then for move out day it's like you have exam week and like you're done the semester that week and then the very next day on Saturday by 11 a.m they like everybody, like every resident has to move out. So that was pretty stressful. I actually wish that they like gave us a couple days or like gave us to like the evening to move out. Cause it was like the exact day after like the last exam that you did. So like that whole time or leading up to the exams and even like the exam week, like you're so busy, like focused on studying for the exam that you don't have time to pack and like get everything arranged and like have a car pick you up and stuff to like move out your stuff so like people did start moving their stuff out like the weekend before um just so that it made like it easier for them but like it's so packed like in the lobby and everything like on move out day like it was so stressful it's like so packed with people so many cars lined up um yeah it was and i had work like 
the like I think like an hour and a half after like 11 a.m. So I had work at exactly at 12 30. So I had to like rush out of there Yeah, it was super stressful. But yeah to check out like once you're like once you have all your stuff out of the room um you just have to go back to the front desk and like ask to check out and you just like give back your keys she asks or the front desk they ask you if you're planning on coming back to the Seneca residence I think they ask you that because they like they'll probably keep your permanent like resident card to use like when you come back but even if you say no you could still apply like the next time and like you know get a like uh get a new card <laughs> And then there are food options available at the Seneca residence. They have a subway. Like these food options are located in the lobby. So they have the subway and then they also have the M&M food market. So there's like a bunch of frozen food options. There's like Mr. Noodles and stuff. There's snacks, there's cleaning supplies. They, it's kind of like a convenience store sort of, but it's called the M&M Food Market. I've been in there and the food is really good. The desserts I really liked, the mini eclairs especially, and the lemon blueberry cake, that was really good. The flatbread was also good, but it, like I didn't know how to cook it in the microwave. Yeah, so they have the subway. The subway is really good. For mail, like if you're just expecting like little envelopes, then it'll be located in your mailbox, which all the mailboxes are located on, which all the mailboxes are located on that wall, like in the hallway, like in the hallway near the subway in the M&M &M food market, it's like on that wall. And so you just need your mail key. But if you like, if you're expecting parcels, then parcels must be picked up at the front desk. And you just like ask, can I, like, may I pick up my parcel that i have and they just ask you for your room number you have to show your student id to show that it's you and then yeah you just you just pick it up and for the like mailing info it's just 1760 finch avenue east and then like the little hashtag sign and then your room number 310 dash whatever room number so a or b depending on which room you are like whichever like i was located in room a and then my roommate in my dorm was located in room b it's just like the different bedrooms there also is a printer and computer that you can use to print stuff so it's located in the lobby as well but it's like near the soda machines you just go past there and it's like behind the subway to print you just have to have money on your one card so you can just load up money onto your like online one card and then you just use one card to pay for whatever you print like how many papers you're printing out and all you have to do is just log into the computer using your seneca like information and also when you're ordering food like food delivery to come to the seneca residence the like the delivery people there's a table in the lobby that is specifically just for food deliveries to for like the food deliverer food delivery man or woman or whatever they just like put it on that table and then you come and collect it but like there's normally a lot of food like so you'll know which table it is because there's a lot of residents so a lot of people like order food all the time And I don't know if this is too much information, but I personally like to know the layout of like everything and I know like to know where everything is just in case. So just in case, like, for example, like say your roommate is taking a shower and you really have to use the restroom and you don't feel like walking to campus, even though it's like, what, like a five minute walk. So or like you really have to go and like you don't feel like waiting for your roommate to like finish showering. There's also like washrooms in the lobby. There's two washrooms. There's the one like beside the food delivery table if you're using the women's washroom and then there's also the washrooms available near like behind the subway like near the soda machines there's washrooms over there so just in case just so like you know oh and then there also is no curfew so you can leave or like you can leave or come back to the residence anytime like there's 24 7 security and there's no curfew so there's no time limit on when you can leave the building 
um they're also the seneca residents they don't keep track of who like say if you say if you're living at the seneca residence and you want to visit like your family and you want to sleep over at your family's place for like a day or like a couple days you can do that the seneca resident you don't have to notify the seneca residents like if you're gonna like if you're not gonna be staying at if you're not gonna be like sleeping at the seneca residence but you're gonna be sleeping at your family's place so you don't have to notify anybody you could just leave and go as you please and also i want to add that there's no rule about like only girls allowed in a girl dorm or only boys allowed like you can mix it up like your guy friends can come over and chill like if you want to hang out or like your girls but in like the actual dorm like just for visits but in the actual dorms it's just like two guys in the dorm and then two like girls but like your guys and girls they can come visit your dorm like whenever oh and then i forgot to say so once you move into your bedroom the seneca residents they do give you like a people use it as like a laundry bag but it's like this huge bag and you get like 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 three packs of Lysol wipes, you get a pen, you get a mask, and some hand sanitizer because of like COVID and everything. Or I think it's just kind of like a little like welcoming gift. And then when the term is coming to an end, you'll get an email like from like a Seneca resident advisor, I think and it's just like they send you an email of the end of term survey that you have to do just to like let them know like if the survey is just like to let them know if you're planning on coming back like to live at residence or not like for like future semesters i also wanted to mention that you only get one card or like you get your temporary card and then when your permanent card is ready then you hand in your temporary card to the front desk and you get your permanent card but like you only get one card so if you do accidentally because if you do accidentally leave your card in the room and like you get locked out because you don't have your card like this happened to me once they like if it happens to you once then the front desk is usually pretty like lenient and they'll like give you a temporary card to like get back into your room and then you have to give it back to them within like five minutes so then they'll normally give you like a one time like oh, okay that's fine just the first time but if it happens to you a second time or like more times then you have to pay five dollars to get a temporary card like so make sure that you always have your card like with you when you leave your dorm so that's a come i bought a lanyard from the seneca campus store i got the lanyard pretty late so i wish i would have had it like at the beginning so that's like my only tip to have a lanyard with your card if like you tend on like forgetting it in your room and then yeah so i would also leave the lanyard like on my dorm door like on the little like doorknob and then I would leave a mask there so I never forgot because I think they still require masks like you have to wear it and the Seneca resident room cards they are magnetic so if you keep your like Seneca residence card like the room card if you keep it with other credit cards or other debit cards or just like other magnetic cards then the room key it does like the make the magnetic force in it I guess it lessens or basically just lessens so sometimes like if you keep it with other cards then like when you go to like try to like gain entry into your dorm room then sometimes the card doesn't work if the card doesn't like work or if, like the light doesn't turn green then what you can do is you go down to the main lobby you tell the front desk that your card isn't working and then they kind of like swipe it on this like i think it's a magnetic thing to get back the magnetism in the card and then when you go to use your card it'll work again so my tip is to try i know it's hard because most people they keep it with like their credit card like when they're going out so i know it's hard but try to like separate your seneca residence card like like uh, try to leave it like separate from your debit or your credit cards really just so that you can avoid having to go all the way down to the main lobby and like getting them to swipe your card and get it like magnetized again because it kind of like wastes time 
I have also heard that the Seneca residents, they do do like room checks. I never got a room check for my dorm or neither did my roommate. I think they only do it at like the beginning of the semester, which is like quite odd because you just like just moved in. So I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. I just, just like when my stay was there, I never got a room check, but I have heard that the Seneca residents, they do do like room checks to make sure you don't have like say a pet you brought like because you can't have your pet like when you live at the Seneca residence you can't bring your dog or your cat or your in my case my tortoise I wish I could have but I think they do the checks too just to make sure no one else is living there like with you but I'm not sure really there is also an extended leave or there's an extended stay so if you do need to i think it's like two weeks so if you do like move out day is like the next day after the last exam is so if you do i think if you are like going to be living in the residence for the next semester you could just apply for the extended stay and stay the next two weeks and then those two weeks are like there's two weeks in between the end of the semester and then the start of the semester i think that's how come there's like the extended two weeks so you can do that i also talked to the front desk and they said that like even if you're not like even if you're not gonna be studying during the summer semester you can like say if you stayed at the seneca residence for january till april so during the winter semester right so then the summer break is from may to august so like say if you if you're gonna go back in september like i am so like you have the option they said like they said this to me that you can actually stay at the seneca residence you just have to pay like during the summer even if you're taking no classes like that's an option but for me it's like it's kind of pricey so i was like no i'm just gonna find like my own like accommodation my own rental so that's what i did there is that option if like you do want to do that and then i also wanted to talk about the food meal plans they give you a brochure in like the welcome package that i talked about earlier i forgot to mention that they give you a brochure of like the meal plan options i didn't actually get a meal plan option when i was there just because i was like eh, might as well just do groceries instead it'll probably be cheaper and it'll be like i don't know it'll just be cheaper like but there is meal plan options so they give you a brochure and you can also just look online to see what like meal plan options seneca has to offer and then lastly to close off this video i'm pretty sure i went through everything if not most things the only thing i don't know is about the common kitchen i don't know where it's located and i don't i think it's just a bunch of stoves and like some tables and chairs but i'm not really too sure because i never like was able to access it so that's like the only thing i don't know um everything i pretty much know about the seneca residence oh and then there's also the designated smoking area it's right outside the main entrance of the seneca residence so you can't smoke inside okay and then to close off this video i just wanted to say that like the reason that i moved into residence was because i wanted to experience what it was like for a semester to see how living at the seneca residence would be like and i just wanted that like college experience like having a roommate living in the dorm or like living at your school and like the convenience of it all it's very convenient because it's like right beside your right beside the campus really so you just walk like five minutes and you're there at the campus and you can like access the campus like it's so convenient because like before i was living at home and it took me like an hour and a half to get down there so it's very convenient it's a little bit pricey 1000 a month but it is worth it like if you just want to experience it for a semester it's worth it so yeah that's like the main reason that i wanted to like live at residence i also wanted to like see how living alone would be to see if i wanted to like move out when i was like done the semester which i did because like i, I kind of like prefer it now i like the freedom of it all so yeah that was like my reason for like wanting to live at residence i don't know if i'll go back or not i haven't like made up my mind yet that's kind of like open in the air Ghost.